Hey everybody, the following is an excerpt from the monthly Rotto Roundup, and if you'd like to see the rest of the Roundup, you can hit that I up in the top right corner of the screen, or if you'd like to know more about the game, you can follow the link down in the show notes. And with that out of the way, let's talk about Comet. Now, this is a cool little unassuming game that is totally flying under the radar. It came out, I think, at Essence Spiel last year, got a very limited uh, print run, and uh, nobody is talking about it. And that's a real shame, because this game is amazing. My wife loved this game so much. Um... A spoiler for the most recent Gen Jog, she gave it a 5 out of 5. She maybe gives like 10 or 12 of those a year. This game is, she loves it so much. And I love it too. What is it? Well, it's prehistoric times. A comet is about to smash in and, you know, you know, cause a huge extinction level event. And it's our job to hat. We have a handful of cards. We can play cards to the board to hatch these animals. Um, and we need to get them to safety. We need to get them to sanctuary. We need to, it's a land before time, basically. We need to get them to the safe cave so they won't get wiped out when the comet shows up. And here's the deal. It's a multi-use card game. Because I've got these cards, I want to play them to hatch more of these creatures that I need to save. Because once I save them, the creatures will help me because they give me access to cool special powers that I can use on future turns. Here's the problem, though. Once I've hatched them, I've got to move them through this terrain across water and jungle and desert and, and lava-filled mountains and stuff like that. How do I move them? By sacrificing other cards. Every card is a, t- a creature that you could save, or you could discard the card, and that gives you movement points to move move through the terrain to split amongst all the different creatures you're trying to protect to get to safety. It is sharp. It is fast. It is fun. Like I said, both Jen and I enjoyed it quite a bit. We've played it several times now. There's so much variety. There's so many cool special powers, all the different powers for the different types of animals. Um, and uh, while Jen, it, was, I, it wasn't her favorite, but it was her second most favorite game of the month, I'm a little bit cooler on it for one reason. And it's, a, it's unfortunately a bigger... Two reasons. One, it's a real shame. It's a two-sided board. You can play on either side and it kind of changes the layout. I don't understand why one of those sides wasn't a side devoted for two-player gameplay to tighten the board up. Because they don't do that. It's like they didn't really... The, the, the publishers don't seem to care about the two-player experience. This game is clearly designed to work at its best at a higher player count. Now, don't get me wrong. Jen and I loved it as a two-player game. It's just that... The board is very wide open, and they should have had a two-player board. To t- it would be even better. Because one of the things I didn't mention, if you um, can get your pieces that are moving to safety, if you can get them lined up right, you can create avenues that let you hopscotch, like checkers, you know, jumping over one or more tokens to get to safety faster. So a big part of this game is strategizing to get your pieces together so that they can just piggyback off of each other and get safety sooner. But if you're doing that, if you've created a chain like that that lets you jump around, I want to get my pieces over so I can jump over your pieces as well and benefit from that. And, and if you see my pieces coming towards yours, you want to break yours up um, so or get away from me. So there's this kind of um, you know interactivity between players that's kind of passive and positive that's really cool. And it would happen a lot more at a two-player game if the board was tighter. So I do have to knock them down a couple of notches because they did not... One of the two sides of the board should have been a tight board for lower player counts, and they didn't do that. The other problem is a production issue. Um, There is a mistranslation or an oversight in the English rules that um, describes how one of the powers, the power for wallabies works. And because they mistranslate it into English, there is, at a low player count, the opportunity that the game can get stuck in an infinite, never-ending loop. Uh, Because the Wallabies can fix it so that the timer of the game gets broken and it will never, ever end. And that's unfortunate. I went and I I did a translation of the German rules, and the German rules made uh, perfectly clear that that can't happen. And they were mistranslated into English. So that's something you got to know going in. In case you ever do pick us up and you don't have the original German rules, here's the trick, folks. If you get multiple Wallabies, you only get to use their power once. Even if you got four Wallabies, you don't get to get four extra gold cards. You only... The Wallabies he says, hey, instead of when I rest, draw silver cards, which is the timer of the game. When the silver cards run out, the game is over. And Wallabies say, oh, instead of drawing silver cards, draw gold cards instead. So you would think, oh, if I've got four Wallabies saved, I can draw four gold cards. No, you can only draw one, no matter how many Wallabies you've got. It says that in the German rulebook. It does not say that in the English rulebook. And it makes the two-player game broken. Until I looked in the German rulebook and figured out, oh, this is the way it's supposed to work. So I gotta knock it down for that, because this would have been in my top three 
of the month otherwise, folks. And here's the deal. In spite of the fact that they didn't tighten the board up for two, I enjoyed it so much, and my wife enjoyed it so much. This is a keeper for us. When played correctly, number six of the month is Comet. And thanks for watching, folks. If you enjoyed it, please like and subscribe. It makes a huge difference, believe me. But with that out of the way, if you'd like to see some more, over on the left, you can find a playlist of a whole bunch more Rotto Rapid Reviews. Up in the top right, there's the latest thing that's been added to the channel. And in the bottom right, you've got something YouTube recommends. Okay, folks, thanks for watching.